Speaker, the question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, I wonder if Grant Robertson asked David Shearer, where's the tape? No, I think he did. I wonder if he asked him in caucus, where's the tape? I wonder why he asked the questions he did yesterday in the House designed to make David Shearer look stupid over the tape. Mr Speaker, there's one thing that's become very clear from watching the opposition for those very small number of New Zealanders who bother doing it, which is that they are much more ambitious for themselves than they are for New Zealand. There's absolutely no doubt about that, because this lazy, trite opposition has almost nothing to contribute to the real debates. I'm sure they will debate for the next week, month perhaps among themselves, whether some guy who found the problem in the Wynn's computer was leaked or not leaked, because that's the stuff they like. That's the stuff they like. Was it leaked? Did Grant say to David the right way round, I support you? Actually, the big questions are being addressed by the Greens and New Zealand First. Should we be printing money? Well, the answer is no. Should we throw out the Reserve Bank Act? Well, the answer is no, we shouldn't. But at least they're putting up something substantial that is relevant to the concerns of every New Zealander, and that is their economic security. David Shearer is totally focused on the security cameras in a building most New Zealanders have never seen. Well, he was, he was put there, he was put there as leader to be like John Key. And I just want to say this, David Shearer is no John Key. And I think everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister is leading a government that is relentlessly focused on the economy and the performance of the New Zealand economy by international standards has been very good. I was going to say pretty good, but actually as more other developed economies trend towards recession, the New Zealand economy is maintaining 2 to 3 per cent growth. That is providing higher after-tax incomes for New Zealand families. It's provided more opportunities for New Zealanders to get jobs. It's provided the opportunity to maintain and improve public services under the leadership of the outstanding ministers uh, that were attacked today by the opposition. That is in sharp contrast to what is happening in virtually every developed economy around the world, including, I might say, Australia, where large-scale public sector redundancies falling house prices and growing unemployment are now what is happening in the economy that has in the recent years served us so well as an engine of growth. And Mr Speaker, we will stay relentlessly focused on economic opportunity and on creating jobs. The government has published three or four documents so far, with several to come, that outline in great detail the numerous ways in which we are attending to the one decision that makes a difference for economic growth, and that is the decision made in the workplace uh, by a business, its management and staff, to grow. Until they decide to employ another person, there isn't another job. And we owe a debt of thanks to all those businesses and workplaces who, through the most difficult economic times in a generation, have continued to grow, have continued to pay the wages, to provide a living for families. And that has made it easier for the government to continue its programme of support for businesses through the largest R&D investment that New Zealand has ever had, uh, for families through the most income support New Zealand has ever delivered to families, and for public services who at the same time is going through tough times 
and radical change are offering the highest level of services and satisfaction that New Zealanders have ever expressed. Mr Speaker, a government relentlessly on a mission. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. <coughs> so, Mr.